I always tell people this, don't, don't op offense opens the door for you to be a landing strip to the enemy. Mm. Um, when we were, I just want to share this quick story. Yeah, please when, do. When we were in Nepal and we were yeah. ministering and we went to this area that was, um, it was full of these Hindu temples and there's people, you know, making all the idols and everything. Well, we went there and it wasn't a safe place. Mm, okay. okay. We went there with our team to go minister yeah. and there was a man there and he needed he needed healing. I saw right away because my spiritual eyes were open and I could see that his back needed healing. I went and asked him, hey, do you know the Lord? Do you know Jesus? I had a translator. Okay. okay. Immediately he got offended and he got angry. He was super angry at me. And then I said, listen, okay, your back needs healing. Do you, do you need to have pain in your back? And he said, Yes, I do. And he said, through, this is all through translator. Yeah. 40 years he's had back chronic pain, wow. the sciatic pain going down his back. So wow. I pray for him for wow. healing for his back. He gets healed, completely healed. Wow. We're walking up and down this square. We're walking up and down this square. And all these people, right, of course, are watching. Yeah. Because this is like all these foreigners. What's happening? Walking, oh, my gosh. This guy's getting healed. This crowd gathers around us. Yeah, people. We ended. I ended up leading the man to the Lord. He got his healing first, wow. then Come got on. led to the Lord. In case you were wondering, um, but what happened is the crowd rose up, and they rose up against us, and they they were throwing fists, and it was getting wild. The translator got us out of there, our team out of there. He, I'll never forget this. He turned to look at me and he said, "Anna, you see," and he said, "That spirit of anger jumped from that man to that wow. crowd." And I read Gosh. that scripture became real to me. You know, in Mark 5, where, where Jesus wow. cast the demons out of legion yeah. into the pigs. Yeah. Listen, oh, demons yeah. need a place to go. Oh, yeah. They want a landing place. Oh, so yeah. when you have a fence, when you hold on to a fence, when we hold on to a fence and bitterness, yeah. whether it be towards God, towards other people, yeah. we are opening ourselves up yes. to attack from the enemy. Gosh. Okay, guys. I I hope you're sharing this broadcast because this stuff is real and it's rampant. Okay, look, uh, this is so true. And if you can't relate to what Anna just said on a practical level, let me help you. Have you ever had one of your friends get offended about something and they came to you and told you the story and you got offended for them on their behalf? They're like, oh, I can't believe they did that. Oh my gosh, they should be shot. They should be arrested. That's terrible. And you start getting offended on their behalf. And then it keeps on going. All the other friends come into the circle and it spreads because that's what that demon does. That demon offense jumps on one person. And then look, it's out of loyalty and friendship and everything else that we join in agreement with that offense. Okay. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful. We can, we can still be loyal to a friend and help them but not get offended about it. We can be like, wow, that's wrong. Let's pray about it. Let's deal with this. This is good. We're going to fix it. And it's awesome. Okay. But we cannot let ourselves get offended about it. Look, offense shuts down the miraculous. It totally does. It does. It absolutely does. Yeah. And look, guys, go get your communion because we are going to take communion together and get rid of this offense by the end of the broadcast. But I do want to camp on this point. And that is um, offense shuts down the miraculous. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, it shuts down as you get offended. Listen, you, it's very hard to flow with the Holy Spirit yeah. when you've got offense in your heart. Yeah. Let's just be real. Right. So if you're needing a miracle today, mm. right now, come on. You're needing a miracle. I'm not here to judge you. I've dealt with offense. It's a daily thing. I have to say, Lord, search my heart, oh God. Search my heart. It's in Psalms, I believe it's 26 2. It says, um, Search my heart, oh God. Examine me. Test my mind and my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I have to daily do and say, Lord, is there any area in me that has offense or bitterness, any area of sin? that mm -hmm. I'm not aware of. Because sometimes we're not aware that we can just get mm -hmm. offended in the littlest, littlest way. Yeah. <laughs>
And what happens is it shuts down us from receiving all the fullness or abundance mm. of life. That's John 10, 10, right? The second mm -hmm. part of that scripture says God comes, Jesus comes to give us abundance of life. Yes. The enemy tries to steal that from us yes. through our offense. Look, guys, I have seen so many miracles happen when I preach about not being offended. In fact, we have a resource called Do Not Be Offended. Um, and I know Anna has too. We're, we're going to take communion. And so part of taking communion is what Paul said to examine ourselves. So we won't be partaking of the body, you know, er erroneously. We won't be not discerning the body of Jesus Christ and what he did for us when he shed his blood and his body was broken for our sin. So we are going to move into that. But I just want to prove to them really quick with this scripture in Matthew 13 about how offense shuts down the supernatural. So guys, this is the story where Jesus came back to his own country of Nazareth. And he was teaching in the synagogue and there were people that, that were amazed and everything else saying, where did this? man get his wisdom and and what about these miraculous powers that he has and but then they started getting offended they said is this not the carpenter's son where do you get all this wisdom how come he can work all these miracles is this not the is, is mary's son we know his brothers james joseph simon and judas we know them uh, it, it, you know how could he have all this wisdom and power and it says and uh, it says and they took offense at him they took offense at him. They were repelled and hindered from acknowledging his authority, and it caused them to stumble. And he's and it says that he did not do many works of power there because of their unbelief. Part of the unbelief came through the offense. Jesus couldn't work miracles there because of their unbelief and because their offense. When you allow yourself to get offended, you're shutting down the very miracle that you're desperate to get. The very thing that may have even allowed you to get offended at God himself and Jesus. It's like, why aren't you doing this? What happened? You can see that I'm in pain. You can see what's going on. And I'm not belittling your situation. I'm trying to give you wisdom to know that if you allow yourself to get offended, you will not see many miracles. You will see the power shut down. That's why one of the big reasons why I've always, you know, made sure I stayed out of offense. And offense... um, it's often in families. Yes. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Like, let's just be real. Yeah. There's a lot of times where you get families together, big groups. And I'm saying that someone's going, oh, that's me. Hallelujah. Don't I know it? Amen. At home. <laughs> Don't scream at the camera. In fact, chat it in, guys. <laughs> chat it in. But you get your family together. Now, I love my family. I'm not right. speaking negative about my family. But the, the enemy does sometimes use things in the families to stir up yeah. offense yep. because it's those who you're closest to, those who know you the best. He's for whatever reason, he can use things to yes. stir up offense. Even sometimes it's my own kids say something and I'm like, Oh, you know, and I'm ah. like, you know, and the enemy just uses it. So check yourself. Is Come there on. something going on yeah. in your family? Have you had offense lately? Did it yes. rise up Come for on. you as the family got together? Did the Jesus. enemy use that ground to just stir up a little Thank lie right in there, a little offense mm. in your heart? Was there something that got stirred up? And if you feel something, here's what you do with offense. Repent. Thank Lord, you, I repent for my offense. We can't talk about all these keys Thank if we Jesus. don't give the biggest one, which is repentance. I repent for my Thank offense Jesus. and I turn away from it. Repent means to turn away. So I physically am going to turn away and say no to this offense. Yes. And we got to keep choosing it. Yeah, guys, you need to repent. And then, like she said, turn away. What does that mean? Because those those offended thoughts, those critical thoughts about that person, your neighbor, your friend, your mom, your dad, your kids, your husband, your wife, wh whoever it is, it, they're going to keep on trying to come back and invade. And if you allow them in and then you start rotating on that thought, chewing on it, growing it, and, you know, talking in your mind, self-talk about what you would say back to them if they, you know, if you saw them again or, or what they need to know, or you, you start even rehearsing little, little conversations you have with them the next time you talk to them about that. I mean, th that's not repenting and turning away from the offense. That's embracing it. And it grows through that, guys. You have to shun those thoughts. You have to 
put up a barrier and say, I will not think about that. I will bless that person right now. I bless them. I love them. I, I, I release you, your favor upon them, God, right now. I don't receive those thoughts. Devil, I decree right now, this is where the line in the sand is. You cannot keep on putting those thoughts in my mind. I don't receive them. You have to get aggressive. You have to get aggressive yeah, to break free. Such a good point is after repentance, bless. Yeah. that person yeah. that bless that person. I bless. And you know, another thing I wanted to say is with offense, often leaders, right? Yeah. Maybe pastors in your life, someone or your boss, come on, the Lord, like oh my gosh. the enemy will stir up things with someone that's maybe in authority position over you. Right. I'm saying it because I see it. So it's happened, but I'm saying, I'm saying it because I'm hearing it from the Lord. Yeah. And what you do repent, but then you bless that person. Yeah. I, Lord, I bless that person. I bless their marriage. I bless their finances. I bless their ministry. You sow in blessing yeah. to that specific situation. All right. Whatever that situation is right now for you. It's true guys. And, and I've seen this happen in businesses, ministries, as a leader of ministry, I have many staff that work with me. We all have to be so careful like if anybody says anything with kind of a weird tone or, you know, says something that is hurtful or even if people don't realize they've said something hurtful, we, we, we have this pact with each other. You know, if somebody says something to you and they don't even realize it, reach gently over to them and say, hey, hey, I love you. And that I hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, don't get offended yourself. Just, you know, touch them, reach out to them, forgive right away. And if you do say something to somebody right away, come back and say, oh, you know what? That, oh, that I felt that come out. That didn't. That didn't feel good when I said it. I'm super sorry. Forgive me. You know, I, I don't want to speak to you like that. I mean, be quick to jump on your negative responses that come out of your mouth. Be quick to go to a person who might have hurt you. They might not even realize they did it and say, hey, I, I, you know, I got a little hurt by that. I don't want nothing to happen between us. Let's work it out. Let's talk about it. But we have to be proactive against offense. Amen. We We're going to take communion. Guys. I hope you went and got it. If you didn't, um, go get it now. If you don't have it, you can do it prophetically. Okay, make sure you're, you're part of the family of God, though. If you're watching this and you're not born again, you can only eat the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed for you if you're part of the family of God, which means that you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Look, if you're not born again and you've been watching this broadcast and you're convicted, it's like, wow, I'm offended at everyone. I'm offended at my family. I'm offended at my friends. You need Jesus. He can supernaturally heal you of the grip of that horrible affliction and sin of offense. So pray this prayer with me if that's you. Just say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I confess my sin to you now. I want to receive you into my heart right now. I believe you died on the cross for me and you were resurrected from the dead so that my sins could be forgiven and that I could have eternal life. Say now, come into my heart and rule my life as my Lord and King and bridegroom forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to lead everyone through the repentance. We've got about five minutes. And uh, okay. if you have any words of knowledge, but you lead them through this communion awesome. so they can be healed. Amen. So get your, your bread or your juice, whatever you have at home. And uh, these are always fun to open. Yeah, on yeah, I'll camera. <laughs> you do that and I'll do this. Okay, there thank you, go. you so okay. much. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So Father, we just take take the Jeez. bread in your hand. Father, we just come before you, Lord. And we say, search our heart, O oh God. Show us Jesus. if there's any area, Lord, that I need to ask you for forgiveness for right now. Thank you, Lord. God, we repent. I repent Jesus. before you Jesus. from any area of offense. Okay, and the Holy Spirit will bring it up right now to you. Mm. He'll yes. bring it. Mm. Any area, God. I just repent. And I thank you, Lord, that this bread represents your body that was broken on behalf for me. And as I take this bread, I remember what you went through, Jesus. And the victory that you had on the cross is enough for me to walk in freedom and healing right now. 
Thank you, yes. Lord. And just take the bread Jesus. and eat it and remember thank his you, body. Thank and we you. thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And God, we just, we remember mm. through this juice that's here, we just remember your blood that was shed. I declare that your, that his blood, one drop of his blood is enough to shift your very situation that you're in right now. And I thank you, God, that your blood is enough. Your blood was shed for me, for you, for all of us, God. And we take this cup and we remember what you went through, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus. And we apply and we plead your blood over our lives, over our family, over our finances, over our marriage, over our situation right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I'm getting a word of knowledge. Um, seasonal allergies and sinus issues. Look. You just took communion. You're about to be healed. All right. I can, I can't tell you how many times people have come into my meetings and I've been teaching on a fence and they get healed of these kinds of sinus issues. I had a guy come in and he'd had a sinus infection for three years, three years. It was so bad. It would, it would drip. And it said it was so bad. He said it would stink. He said people next to him could smell it. And as soon as he got healed of a fence, it dried up completely immediately and went away. I had a woman from Australia. She came to a meeting of mine and I was teaching on a fence. And when she got on the plane in Australia to come to that meeting in America, she, she said, oh no, I forgot my medication. She had had a sinus infection for like six or eight months. And they had been putting her on this antibiotic and she'd finish the round and it would still be there. And they'd put her on another one. She'd finish it, still be there. So she gets on the plane and she forgot her medication. She's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Hopefully when I get to America, I can find a doctor to give me the medication. She comes to the meeting and the Lord says, you don't need to have medication. You're going to heal, get healed now in this session. And she goes, really? How? And he, and he goes, you just listen, I'll show you. And I began to teach about offense. And she realized she'd become offended at so many people. As soon as she repented and got healed, that sinus infection completely cleared up and she was healed. Now, so in the name of Jesus right now, if that's you with any sinus issues, seasonal allergies, in Jesus' name right now, I say you've taken communion, you've partaken of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, your sins of offense are washed away, they're under the blood, the body of Christ is bringing you life because Jesus is the bread of life, you're healed of all trauma, all offense, all woundedness, and I command that spirit of infirmity to come out of you now in the name of Jesus, and I speak to your sinuses, be healed in Jesus' name right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus right now. It's drying up. I just heard it. It's drying up right now. Right now. Those sniffles, that post-nasal drip, that stuff that came from the allergies or the infection or the sinus block, your nose, your sinuses are opening, clearing right now in the name of Jesus, drying up in the name of Jesus now, in Jesus' name. Now, we only have a minute 50 left. I want you to chat in. If you felt the power of God hit you uh, during that prayer right now and chat in what you had and what happened. And this is a powerful teaching. I think people should go back and listen to it again and again until if they haven't gotten healed on this round, they should go back and listen to it because they're going to get it. Come on. You know, there's there's someone else. I just got a go. word. Um, I heard you're offended at the timeline of the Lord. Wow. And it's over your ovaries. There's wow. something that Come you're on, you're needing healing in your ovaries and it's been locked for years wow. and years and years. And I, I had a vision, really an open vision wow. that you've gone through doctor after doctor after doctor and tried many different Jesus, things, you, naturally, Lord. medically, everything. Right. But the offense has been over this process. Okay, prayer healing. We have 50 seconds left. So Father, in Jesus' name, I just release Thank healing Jesus. to those ovaries My right God. now Father. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus. that simple. Jesus. That's that simple. Thank I believe Jesus. the Lord just released new ovaries to you. you. Today is your day. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus. Thank name. you, Lord. Such a great show. Where can people find you? Tell us addresses. Tell us what you want them to read. What do you got? 
Yep. Go to my website. It's AnnaWarner.org. Um, I have all my information there. But if you're interested on anything to do with like spiritual warfare, my book is called The Warrior's Dance. Warrior's Dance. That is all about this as well. I am a seer. Yep. So I have a book called The Seer's Path. I do a mentorship yep. online. I've now mentored over 1,700 students on the seer anointing internationally and go. i love to do that so go to my website on a and follow me there and we'll see you guys next week